Oh, good. It already came muted. <coughs> A little later than I was hoping for. But I had to go take care of some shit. How you doing, Kazixps? You actual bot. <laughs> Why do I got the bots out? And they don't even count as a view. I don't want to start until we get at least one guy in here. <coughs> Ooh, the winter sick. Hits me every season. See if Micah can pop in. Time to vote, keep my eyes shut so I can not see the nominees until we get to the very end. There we go, okay. We'll go down the list and go up. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm very happy that they at least brought back best film. Although, I can't really recall many anime films that came out last year that were of note. Let's see here. Oh shit, Bell made the list? Oh, okay, well then, yeah. Literally fuck all these other movies. Uh, D Demon Slayer, LOL. I haven't seen Shirobaka the show yet, but I've heard that the movie is just more of the show. Uh, I did watch Josie the Tiger and the Fish, and that was good. Uh, Ava Rebuild, Lolmo, uh, Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop. This is on Netflix, I think, and I've heard that this is cool as well. But I mean, come on. Mamoru Hosoda. All these guys are not Mamoru Hosoda, so... What are you gonna do? They should have picked a year where Mamoru Hosoda and Chizu didn't put a movie out. Forehead? Alright, best fantasy. <coughs> oh, they're counting cores now? Did, uh... Did Jobless Reincarnation have its second core last year, though? Yeah, it totally did. You, you could absolutely count this. Why are they specifically singling out core one? When they could just counted as the whole show. <laughs> Wonder Egg priority. <laughs> no. No. Uh, any y'all watch Wonder Egg? Did you watch it all the way through? That shit was 
funny. It started off so cool and so promising too, and then it horrifically shat the bed. Episode 12 is a nothing burger, and then that 13th episode that they aired like months after the fact was like mostly a recap, and then the other half was literally like with time wasted. Nothing got resolved. I think they wrote out a character, I forget who. But it was awful. Just awful. How you doing, uh, boys in the chat? We got Night Late Dark Sock. And Xfro Dom CC. How y'all doing? <coughs> Don't be shy. We are here to make fun of this together. Let's see. Uh, season 2 of Reincarnated Slime. The most noteworthy thing about Season 2 of Reincarnated Slime was that one Twitter clip that was going around of this dude uh, recreating anime moves. And then one guy tweeted out that this is the- I can't believe that the greatest Kamehameha came from something that wasn't Dragon Ball Z and he got fucking destroyed by the DBZ community. And that was the most noteworthy thing about this kind of boring show. Uh, I've heard Two Year Eternity is one of those, uh, what's the fuck was it called? What was the other show with the white haired protagonist? Mushishi type of shows where it's real slow and it's real episodic and... A different story every week. Almost I was a term anthology esque. But it from what the two episodes that I saw of it, I liked it and I would continue it. Uh, it just wasn't exciting enough for me to like to keep up with on a regular basis. Uh you know what I should turn this music off. Ranking of Kings, I have not seen that yet, and I'm upset that I haven't watched Ranking of Kings yet, because everyone that I've talked to and everyone that I've seen online says it's the hottest shit. It's got beautiful animation, it's got this really whimsical sense of dreamlike charm and wonder, and brings you like back to being a kid. In the case study of Vanitas, I watched the first episode and went, yep, this is definitely a show meant for the the Fujo crowd. And it ain't exactly for me. Sadly, the only show I finished on this list was Wonder Egg Priority, and that was a mistake I wish I could take back. But, uh, I'm willing to believe from what I've seen of Rank of Kings. It got, Rank of Kings got the Mott Brawley Amphibia approval, okay? That's, that's good enough for me. Alright, best romance, the one that doesn't matter at all. Um, oh wait, do they not do best couple anymore? Oh, thank god, okay, no, this actually means something now. Best couple is actually an award that ma- uh, Best couple is not an award that matters, this one is one that does. Was oh, surface stop another bot? Yeah, he is. I see you guys in the chat. Don't be shy. B Stars, which I assume is season two, not season one, even though I'm pretty sure the screen cap is from season one and they haven't Yeah, they 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 specified final season of Fruits Basket and the second co uh, the first core of Mushika Tensei, so This is season two of B Stars, right? Because season one didn't come out officially on Netflix until 2020. 20, yeah, 2020. Uh, Nagatoro, which I forgot was last year. Komi-san, The Duke of Death and His Maid, Horimiya, and Fruits Basket. Um, gonna say no to Fruits Basket because that's just another season. Same with Beastars, you had your chance. Duke of Death and His Maid, I like the romance element of it. As a show, it's kinda not good. New friend request on Mal.
This guy in the chat? I feel like if I click on this, this will be a mistake. Okay, no. I don't know who this guy is. <coughs> uh, Horamiya, very cute. Oh, wait, shit, Dooku Death is made. Um, didn't finish my thoughts on that. It's a good romance, and I really like the design of the, the maid. She is ridiculously hot. The problem is... The show is not the proper way to consume Duke of Death and His Maid because it's CG that does nothing to take advantage of the fact that it's CG and it could have easily been 2D unlike Beastars where it benefits from 3D with excellent direction. Uh, the action scenes are highlighted because they can do more dynamic camera work. And the model and the 3D animation is way better. So... If this were the manga, we'd be talking, but this, since we're talking about the anime at the Anime Awards, we gotta take this one off the list. Nagatoro, no. N -n Sorry, but no. Between Horamiya and Komi Can't Communicate, I've seen more of Horamiya. I've seen seven episodes of it, and I've only seen one episode of Komi. But both are good. Um... As far as romance goes, I'd honestly want to give it to Horamiya, if only because it's a romance where they actually get into a relationship. Whereas, don't get me wrong, Komi's good. Komi's cute. If Horamiya weren't here, Komi would win. But as far as, like, fulfilling romances go, I mean, spoilers, they fuck in this one. So, what would what, you what would you think? I was going to pick the one that where they didn't fuck it out of here. Excuse me. Best drama, 87. <laughs> no. Kakagi Shoujo? Did people actually watch that? Prince Basket Final Season, no. <laughs> Wonder Egg, no. To Your Eternity, maybe. Pick Kakagi Shoujo or die. Oh, Kiko. Oh, man. Unfortunately, I would, as much as I would love to pick the idol show that's indistinguishable from most every other idol show. I, just, I I can't. Uh, oh, you see, you see, my hand is reaching for the mouse, but I, uh, it it just won't let me click. Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. It's just uh, some, something internal. It's a fight or flight situation. Every word you said is wrong. Well, <coughs> I'm sorry. That's just the first. That's just the impression that the first episode gave to me. For what it's worth, the the main girl with the gradient hair, the tall one, she was cute. That's more than I can say about 86. That's more than I can say about Fruits Basket. I'll give you that. Uh, Wonder Egg had better character designs, but it's a bad show. Do not watch it. Uh, it's between Two Year Eternity and Odd Taxi, and I've, I haven't watched Odd Taxi yet. I know what happens at the end. And it is wild. I've heard people say that Odd Taxi was the dark horse, the sleeper of the year. And they're probably right. If, uh, because I think more people were watching Ranking of Kings than, uh, Odd Taxi. Um, To Your Eternity is probably good, from what I watched of it, it's good, but I feel like Odd Taxi is the kind of show where more things happen in it on a more frequent basis, and it's more engaging on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So I think Odd Taxi's got to take it here. Best comedy. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, sorry, literally every other show. I see Dragon Maid. Dragon Maid autom automatically gets the vote. Um, As far as what would have possibly competed with it, I didn't watch Heaven's Design Team. I did not hear people talk about Heaven's Design Team. Uh, I haven't seen people really talk about the comedy of Odd Taxi, just like the drama aspect. Komi-san is funny, Nagatoro is not funny. Uh, Life Lessons with Urumichi. I've seen the first episode, and I did give it a glowing recommendation in the, the podcast episode that I did. And it did have a really funny first episode. And the, this dude in green right here, uh, who I believe is voiced by Mamoru Miyano, delivered a fucking hilarious performance. 
And like fuck ge- the most genuine laugh I've ever heard in an anime. I need to fucking position myself in the actual frame of the camera and not fucking hunch over. Um, as far as this list would go, it's between these three. But Dragon Maid is Dragon Maid. And then, while I know I gave Fruits Basket shit earlier for <coughs> being a sequel, Dragon Maid gets a pass because it's one of the greatest anime ever made, and Fruits Basket is just a reboot, so even if it was, even in, like, disregarding it being a sequel, it already came out at one point. <laughs> Sorry, but... Nope. In fact, I would have put Dragon Maid in Best Romance if I could. Best action. I would put Dragon Maid in here, too, because it had the best fight scene. Ooh, no, it could probably show up in best fight scene between Toru and Elma. Attack on Titan is here, so it'll win. Jujutsu Kaisen. I didn't know Vivi Florite's Eye had, uh, had action in it, and I've heard that is also a sleeper hit. Wonder Egg had... Okay, action... It was good. See, every thought that I have about Wonder Egg gets immediately tainted by the horrible, the horrible ending, and that makes me sad <coughs> because it had such promise, and I want to like Cloverworks more than I do because they can put out good shit. But uh, between that and Promise Neverland, which I am noticing is not on the list on any of these thus far. I can't help but feel like they had a shaky, shaky 2021. Uh, SSS Dynazenon is just Gridman, but called something different, and I didn't care for the action in Gridman, so I'm gonna assume that this is just more of the same. This is a movie, fuck off. Um, yeah, this is the one that I, I can't uh, have a say in. I've, again, I've only seen Wonder Egg, and again, I wish I could take that back. I am not cut up on Attack on Titan. I haven't started Jujutsu Kaisen yet. Um, I am not in the habit of rewarding MAPPA right now because I feel like MAPPA's getting... People are sucking off MAPPA too hard recently, and I I don't really approve of it, especially because the, the work culture over at MAPPA ain't exactly pristine. And I especially have it out for Jujutsu Kaisen because it won Anime of the Year last year despite it not being done yet, yet here it is in its second core of being nominated for the 2021 awards. Or for anime that came out in 2021. So, no, and also, maybe this should win, but it's also a sequel. Uh, fuck it, give it to Wit. This is Poetic Justice, they used to, they used to do Attack on Titan. And this, this probably does have the better action. The the dark horses are the ones that are usually the best shows and not the not the most popular. <coughs> best ED. Uh, I did not see any of these. <coughs> uh, Lisa, I just don't really like. <laughs> Oh man, am I gonna have to listen to these? I don't wanna have to get copyright struck like I did last time. Um, Dragon Maid isn't here, so all of these are wrong. I do not remember the ED to Shadow's House, and I streamed it. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna... Did I like it? Hold on. Maybe I can... If I quietly play the audio and talk over it the whole time. Nye, nye. <coughs> oh no, I'm looking at the best ED. Shadows House ED. Was the song good? Or the visuals good? <coughs> oh yeah, I forgot that they mimicked the train. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to clear my throat over all this so I can not get copyright struck. Alright, the visuals are nothing to write home about. It's just a bunch of layered JPEGs. Let's 
skip to the chorus. Okay, this... Oh no, this is 60 FPS, so... Don't upload anime openings and endings in 60 frames per second, goddammit, it makes it look ugly. Eh, this is alright. Probably wouldn't give it the award, though. What do you think, Kiko? Have you seen any of these shows? I need to watch Beastars. I don't really care about Demon Slayer. Attack on Titan, uh, maybe. I don't even know any of these, aside from Lisa, because I don't like Lisa, I don't even know any of these artists. Um, let me look at the Beastars ED. Beastars ED2. Ooh, I like the art style. I gotta skip ahead. Yo, this is cool. I like this. I like this. It's a Louie one. I like Louie. Louie's a Chad. Not a lot happened in it, but it looked cool. Um, I guess while we're going down the list. Uh, Shogeki. AOT. Let's see the ending. Um, yeah, I can tell just by looking at it. No. Infinity. Skate the infinity. I'm sorry that I cannot play this, but this showing the visuals will absolutely get me copyright struck. Ooh, I like the music. Alright, there's not much animation, it's just a bunch of stills. I like the song, but uh, not not feeling the not feeling the visuals. I'm not even gonna bo fucking bother with this because I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be bad. Ah, eh, fuck! I'll give it to B stars. Why not? Best opening. I swear to fucking god, if Love Supreme is not on here, yep, yep. Sorry, sorry. Literally every show, but uh. Y you can't beat KyoAni, man. You just can't do it. Like, who ya? More like, who are ya? Skirt and pun pee? Skirt and shit and pee pee? More like it. Uh, Tokyo Revengers deserves no rewards. Read the manga, do not watch the show. It is not a good adaptation. Maybe Beastar- Oh wow, the this Yoasobi did the opening and the ending. Uh, I don't think the opening was in that awesome stop motion, so Beastars OP2. It was not. Okay, so it's already not as cool. And uh, Attack on Titan. If this is the one that I think it is, that's a hilarious no. Boku no Senso. Is this the one that I'm thinking of? This is the one that I'm thinking of. Wow, people like that opening? That one fucking sucked ass. Yeah, this one's just kind of a no-brainer. As in, if you don't vote for Love Supreme, you have no brain. Best English performance. I did not watch any of these dubs. I heard Fina Pirate Princess was an Adult Swim show, and I heard it came out on Adult Swim before it came out in Japan, which is cool. I didn't watch any of these shows dubbed. And as far as people that I've heard of, I think I've heard of Adam MacArthur? Never heard of Matt Shipman. Okay, that name looks familiar. I think she was on last year's list. Anairis Kinones. Um... Two Skate the Infinity characters. Alright. 
I'm just gonna check something real quick. Skate the Infinity. Who did the dub for Skate the Infinity? Who was in charge of the dub? Production. Okay, Funimation. All right, I thought for a second that, well, Crunchyroll and Funimation are owned by each other, so I guess, or well, I forget who owns who, but one of them owns the other, so. And this is kind of favoritism, but I have not heard a single person talk about the dub for Skate the Infinity. And I usually hang around people who tend to watch dub anime, so. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure this woman did a fine job with Rika, but I'm just not in the habit of giving Wonder Egg any awards this year. Um. I don't know, I don't, I don't have a horse in this race. I like Laura Bailey, I, I'd have to look back at what Brittany Cox has done. I know I've heard of her name before. Um. I know, because I watched some of the Fruits Basket dub for season one, I know that Toru Honda is not her best work. Uh, you know what? Shonen dubs are usually safe, so I'm gonna pick the normie pick here. I'm just gonna give it to this one. This one doesn't really matter to me. This one matters a little more. Um... Well, I said that, and then they went ahead and gave two different nominees to Attack on Titan. Uh, the only one of these, once again, was Wonder Egg. And she was fine, but once again, I'm not going to give Wonder Egg any awards. Also, if you're going to give one a voice acting award, you, Rika was right there for the Japanese performance. I don't have a horse in this race. Yuki Kaji's a good actor. Uh, you know what? Since literally no one else will pick him, and I haven't seen any of Lupin the Third yet, I'll go ahead and give it to him. His name has Kobayashi in it. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. That's all the reasoning I need. Best score! The more I look at these, the more I am reminded that I did not watch or finish a lot of anime last year, and that was a big mistake. Um, Wonder Egg score, I can remember fucking nothing about. I, okay, Hiroyuki Sawano did 86, but 86 is not a good show, so maybe it's probably like an El Noah Zero situation. Where it was good. Sunny Boy Love Live, Superstar, and Kaki Shoujo were nominated. Did they have good scores? Sunny Boy's first episode literally had no music. I'm sure it had music as it went along, but. Also, fucking R.I.P. Sunny Boy it hasn't been nominated for shit yet. It could have been in Best Drama if it wanted to, if they deemed it worthy. Then again, I didn't see many people talk about Sunny Boy. So maybe it just went under the radar. Um, you know what? The scores are good. I bought them, Chad. You know what? The first soundtrack to Megalobox was based, I assume the second soundtrack was just as based. So I'm going to give it to that one, even though I haven't seen. But you know what? Maybe I'm not that qualified for this year's list. But you know what? They're still fucking wrong because I see 86 on here, I see Demon Slayer on here, I see fucking Wonder Egg. Something has still gone to miss. No, for something you don't know about. Well, what am I gonna do? Vote for Wonder Egg? Fuck no. I'm sorry if I'm horribly ruining the, the voting for this award show that doesn't matter that exists for me to shit all over. Best character design. Okay, this one could be one that Wonder Egg might actually win because they, they did have good character designs. That's what Cloverworks has going for them. They are consistently good with their character designs. Jujutsu Kaisen is a sequel, fuck off. Oh yeah, character design also goes heavily towards original shows, by the way. 
So even though Ranky of Kings has wonderful character designs in the anime, that's a manga good sport. Your picks will definitely alter anime awards history. Well, you know what? They didn't have me on as a judge. Uh, so fuck him. Fuck him. City movies got to see when a bunch of dudes are playing a four-player game. It's cross between Viva Pinata and Halo. Not gonna lie, I want it. True. All right, so... Was Skate the Infinity a summer show? No, it was spring. It was spring. Or winter. I forget. Okay, winter. There it is. Okay, so... It was original. Damn, we got fucking four originals this time around. Um... Let's see. Skate the Infinity characters. Um... No. Nah, they look like characters from a male idol gotcha game. Odd Taxi's just furries. It's just B-stars, but not as impressive. Vivi, Fluorite's Eye Song. Characters. Um... Is this what the show looks like? It's got the fucking... What's it called? Is this what the show looks like? Is it CG? No, she's not... She's flat here. Ooh. Okay, immediately off of this. Eh. Yeah, fuck it. Give it to Vivi. Once again, I will not reward Wonder Egg for anything. It had burned me too badly. Sorry, man. I see Dragon Maid. That's an instant gravitational pull. I'm sure Vivi had good animation. This is a movie. Fuck off. Wonder Egg had good animation. You don't need to signify core one. You could just do the whole show. I'm not going to give Jujutsu Kaisen any other awards besides voice acting, which doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, uh, I see, you know what, you know what, you know why Dragon Maid won this one? It's Kyoto Animation. These studios are not about animation, but these guys are, because they got it in the name. That's the science that I'm going with. Best Director. Oh, there, there's Sunny Boy. Shingo Natsume, I forgot he directed that. Uh, I'm not... Why is Wonder Egg getting so many fucking nominees? I think Wonder Egg has the most nominations, if not that, then Attack on Titan or Jujutsu Kaisen. But Wonder Egg was, like, bad. It was good for a mo time, and then we all turned on it because it, was, it, it, it shat the bed. Um... Sung-Hoo Park is a good director. Uh, Shingo Natsume is good. I don't know. Sunny Boy. Man, I just don't know. Chef. What do you think, Kiko? Did you watch any of these? Sunny Boy? I know you watched Sunny Boy. How, how well directed was Sunny Boy? Because I, 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 this one, I, I wish I had a horse in this race. I'm glad that there's no films here, because that'd be cheating. Like, if, if Mamoru Hosoda showed up here for Bell, that's just an automatic win. I don't know. 
I, I don't really know. I guess... Um, mm, 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 not rewarding this. Uh, Attack on Titan does have good direction. I guess I'll be a normie this one time. Except no, fuck you. I don't, I, I can't bring myself to pick the normie pick. I'll throw. I don't know, you know what? Fuck it. You you get to pick this one. Do do I pick? Yeah, you know what? Fuck. I'll get I'll get to Shingo. Why not? Who cares? All right. If Toru versus Elma is not here, it's wrong. Wait. Why does this one have a YouTube video? Oh look, there it is. Sweet. The actual best fight scene of the year. Yeah, you can pretend that Jujutsu Kaisen can get two nominees and both be good. And you can pretend that Attack on Titan has good CG fights, and that Boruto is worth anything. But this was the actual best fight of the year, and if you didn't, if you don't agree, you didn't watch Dragon Maid. Plain and simple. I fucking felt shit with these. These were probably hype, but that was all I felt. I felt hype and I felt emotion. So. Best antagonist. Is the final season where Eren goes full villain? I thought it was later in the show. Is Echidna is not a fucking villain. Oh my god. My hero got fucking no nominees this year. Shigaraki, this is the first time they've shown up. They got fucking blown out. I can't believe it. My hero is finally dying. Repost the stream to kill the My Hero Academia fandom faster. Uh, no, no, no. It's a pr probably not. Um. Between these two. Eh, yeah, fuck, I'll give it to Shigaraki. He's cool. I like him. Eren look, looks cooler than Shigaraki, but. Uh, Aaron is kind of right, and the way they beat him in the manga is really stupid, so... I'll give it to Shigaraki on the basis of they haven't fucked him up yet. Um, excuse me? Am I taking crazy pills here? Why is Aaron in both best protagonist and best antagonist? That's not how that works, me bucko. Uh, Yuji should not be here. Uh, you, you already nominated him for Best Protagonist last time. Joe shouldn't be here. He already had his chance. Aaron shouldn't be here. Yeah, Aaron... Man, this is a bad list. Okay, maybe Yano does deserve it because he's, he would have already won Best Protagonist. Man, these nominees are so shit that I have to go back to pick... I have to go back on my own fucking rules. This is a bad, this is a bad list. Uh, fuck it, give it to Boji, he's, he, he's a good boy. Boji's a Chad. He's an actual good person, unlike fucking Two-Face Aaron Yeager over here. Whack. Alright, uh, this one's just gonna, these are just the Flame War Awards. Lol, no, maybe, maybe, no... Uh, Kiko, I'm sorry, but no. Okay, if we're gonna nominate characters from Sarasago, fuck, like she is the closest thing to a Dragon Maid character on this list. I will not accept your fucking Steam key. Okay, if they could put Toru and Nobara here, why the fuck couldn't they put Kobayashi or literally any of the Dragon Maid girls here? That's f that's not fair. All right, um, Komi looks hotter in the manga than she does in the anime, so I will give it to Nobara only because she is kind of extremely hot. But there are no Dragon Maid girls here, so this list is invalid. 
Best boy. Oh, look, Dr. Stone's one nomination. <laughs> kind of. And no, bar, no, bar, no bar is hot. The bar is pretty hot. She gets hotter, especially at the end of the season. Uh, two, two Tokyo Revengers nominees, fuck off. Neither of them are good. Only the gay Goo Goo Gaga people are the ones who like Tokyo Revengers. Maybe he probably is deserving of being on here. Uh, Miyamura is a good boy. Boji is a good boy. I won't give it to Senku. Uh, you know what? If Boji gets to be the best protagonist, Miyamura deserves to be the best boy. Because he actually... He's the only one on this list who, at, as far as I know, canonically gets some pussy. So, I'll reward it that. And we're blazing through this one faster than last year, and this just highlights the anime that I've not seen last year. And you know what? That's on me. But now that I have the podcast... That is going to change dramatically. You know what? Let's give this one... Oh, wait, no. I can't play the video because I'll get copyright struck. 86 was not fucking good. Why is 86 here? Why did you put Jujutsu Kaisen in anime of the fucking year again? Again with this shit. An attack on Titan, but no Dragon Maid. Yeah, Sunny Boy suddenly appears... Okay, kick 86 the fuck out of here. Replace it with Dragon Maid. Get Jujutsu Kaisen Attack on Titan out of here. Replace it with Vivi and... I don't know. Why was... You nominated Wonder Egg for so many other awards, you would think Wonder Egg might get Anime of the Year, but I guess they realized the ending was too shit. This reminds me of last year, where Apari Rodman got no fucking nominees for anything except Anime of the Year. Like, it got no nominees except for the one that matters. Um... I swear to God, if Jujutsu Kai... Well, no, Jujutsu Kaisen's not going to win, because... It won last year. And while Crunchyroll are retarded, they're not that retarded. Also, Lamau, I didn't see High Guardian Spy show up once. I wonder why. Not just because it wasn't an anime, but because it was bad. They Crunchyroll has no faith in High Guardian Spice. That shit fell off. It died. Good riddance. Attack on Titan final season. Is probably going to win. In fact, I know it's going to win. It's If not that, then Jujutsu Kaisen. Literally, none of these have a chance aside from these two. And it's not even fair. I'm gonna be a good boy and give... Because Matt Braley, Matt Brawley, whatever, however you pronounce his last name. He gave the Ranking of Kings approval. That's all that matters to me. And I probably will watch Ranking of Kings one day. I'll, I'll watch it sooner than I finish Sunny Boy and I start Odd Taxi. And it's still ongoing. Wait a second. Now that I just said that out loud, hold the fucking phone. Is uh, Ranking of the Kings finished yet? Oh, shit. I fucked up. Ranking of the Kings ain't done yet. Oh, no. Hold on. I, can I take that one back? Can I take that back? I can't take it back. Shit. All right. Well, sorry. Ranking of the Kings is now disqualified. Uh, give it to fucking Odd Taxi. Who cares? You can nominate Ranking of Kings next year. I have no problem with rank with uh, nominating it next year, but uh, Ranking of Kings is not done. I forgot that it wasn't done. So I feel bad about that. It still deserves the win more than this, which already won Anime of the Year last year, and it still got a nomination. Yeah, Mantis spoke, you Ranking of Kings won't win. Well, regardless of... I could vote for it a hundred times, and it still won't win, because Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan are here. And if you ain't these, you ain't winning. Uh, this is partially because that- Oh my god, I forgot Shenmue's getting a fucking anime. I completely forgot about that shit. 
Uh, this year is a bad list. This is worse list than last year. And that's also because I didn't watch that much. But you know what? That's what Castaway Anime, that's what Seasonal Shepherd is going to be all about. I mean, I don't care about the- literally none of these awards matter. Because it's all by a company. At least the Oscars are like a board of uh, critics and like people like in the film industry that like actually care about the film industry more than these. When these people care about anime. And at least like same thing even with the game awards. Like at the end of the day, none of these awards matter. They only have as much stock as you put as you put in them, but, like, this one out of all of the, like, this is the closest thing we have to an official award show for anime, and that's why this one only gets the most attention, the more attention than, like, the fucking r slash anime awards, because that's what we had, all we had before, uh, these started coming out every year, the r slash anime awards, and, uh, Yeah, that's all that's all I got really to say about it. Um as far let's let's uh close this out by going through the list of what got snubbed. Good or bad. Um yeah, uh me tells me that Promise Neverland is just funzo dunzo is is getting raked over the coals and that is a goddamn tragedy. What the fuck is Geki Doll? Was that the one that was that that was the comedically bad one, right? Oh no, it's just an idol show that you watched that no one liked. <laughs> Why is Alice in Deadly School in other? Is it the same thing? Same character? I don't know. Who cares? Sorry, bro. If they were gonna give one indistinguishable idol show a, no a nod, you should be thankful that Kageki Shoujo was the one. Okay, let me read the description. Is it like, is it like School Live where it's like actually a zombie show? Global synchronic urban disappearance called a large chunk of I Ikibukuro to disappear overnight. Say disorder. Auroras, I by the performance at a theater, revitalized it through a hologram, young woman, director of Alice in Theater, alright, so I just go to the good house, something seems to be amiss, alright, what's, what's the twist, I'm literally never gonna watch this show, Overall rating, 1. The top ratings of the show on Mal... Th granted, reviews on Mal are, like, anti-helpful. But, uh... A systemic approach to the post-mortem setting? How goes the dumpster fire? Ah, Wizliz, you just you just missed it. We went through the whole we whole, we went through the whole list already. Uh, we can we can churn through it real quick uh, because you were nice enough to show up. Uh, Bell should win best film. What happens when I take lunch? Well, that sh serves serves you right for eating. And not watching the Neon Manta stream. Ranky of Kings should win Best Fantasy. Uh, Horamiya should win Best Romance. Odd Taxi should win Best Drama. Dragon Maid should win Best Comedy. Vivi should win Best Action. Beastar should win Best Ending. Dragon Maid should win Best Opening. Uh, this one doesn't matter at all, but give it to a shonen, just because they tend to be good dubs. Give it to this guy, just because. <laughs> Thank you, Tal. It's very cool. 
best score, give it to fucking Megalobox, because it was cool. We'll give the character design to Vivi, because that was cool. Animations Dragon Maid, because of course, literally, n none of these shows can compare. Best director, give a nod to Shingo. Best fight scene, the one that deserved to win actually got nominated, which is good. Uh, this one pissed me off the most because Aaron Yeager is somehow boasts on both on best antagonist and best protagonist, and that drives me up a fucking wall. That is not how that works. Uh, Shigaraki, Shigaraki, I gave it to Antagonist. I, I get what they were trying to do because I, I know that final season is where he starts, like, flipping from the light side to the dark side. But even still, if you're gonna single out part one, part two is where he goes full evil. Yeah, he will also end up taking both, by the way. If not, he's guaranteed at least one of them because he's in both. If he wins both, I'm gonna fucking scream. Uh, give it to the good boy for best protagonist. Uh, Nobara should win this only because it's hot. She's hot. Uh, Komi might also win it, but uh, she is way hotter in the manga than she is in the anime. Her mouth is too tiny in the anime. Best boy, give it to this guy because he's the only one on this list who we know for a fact fucks. And that's worth winning. That's worth preserving. I mistakenly voted Ranking of the Kings as Anime of the Year, but I forgot that uh, I forgot that it wasn't finished yet. So I kind of regret voting for it, even though I know for a fact that I can vote for it a thousand times. And Jujutsu Kaisen or Attack on Titan will still take the win. 86 does not deserve to be an Anime of the Year. It is a bad show. Sunny Boy might deserve it. Odd Taxi might deserve it. They deserve it more than Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan. <laughs> Reiki of Kings shouldn't be here, but it sh probably should be on the list next year once it's finished. Uh, uh, Ranking of Kings, even though it's only halfway done. Excuse me. Ranking of Kings, even though it's only halfway done, deserves the win more than Jujutsu Kaisen or Attack on Titan. Uh, 86 does not deserve it. If any of these three win, I'll be... I'll be fine. I'll live. If we're gonna nominate sequels, then Dragon Maid should have been on here, but... Oh well. Drinking recommended for Odd Taxi. It does seem like that type of show. I did see that I, when I... That's on Netflix, yeah? Nope, 86 was on, um, Crunchyroll. The, uh, none of these shows are on Netflix. Uh, 86 is Attack on Titan, but sci-fi and bad. Like, it, it, essentially they've, they've nominated Attack on Titan twice for this list. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen might win it, which uh, fucking terrifies me because it won last year. And n especially because they're singling out specifically the second Kerr, even though... Jujutsu Kaisen, they didn't specify Kurs last year. They just started doing it this year. I can see Juju winning. I could too, and that scares me. Uh, now we're just going through a list to see... I forgot that Demon Slayer is technically this year. Yeah, they... It's it's cheating, too, because they can nominate the movie for, like, best film and, like, best fight scene and shit like that. And they can also nominate the the TV anime adaptation of it. So, that's fucked. Kiko, are you sure that Gekidal was good? Because Mal might be inconsistent with its user, with its average ratings, but... They don't you they don't just hand out the 5.5 ratings. Like anything between 6 and like between in the 6 range and the 7 range is debatable. Uh us, very rarely do they fuck up the 8s. Incredibly rare that they fuck up the 9s. But like the only time, in fact, 
The only time I can remember them fucking up... People exaggerate. Hold on, let me check. Gal and Dino. This is the only time in recent memory where I remember they fucked up. And even then, they've rectified their mistake. I remember when this used to be below a 6. Now, it, it's still way too fucking low. But at least this is in the realm of... This is just... This is in this is in the curve. This is outside the curve. Geki doll twist. Why absolute atrocities nominated? Any absolute atrocities nominated? Um, Wonder Egg got like the most nominee. All right, let's let's go down the list and count how many times Wonder Egg got nominated. One for best fantasy. Two for best drama. Three for best action. Four for best uh, English performance. Five for best Japanese performance. Six for best score. Seven for best character design. Eight for best animation. Nine for best director. Ten for best protagonist. Eleven for best girl. And yet, you would think that a show with eleven nominations would get an Anime of the Year nomination. But no. Now, let's go down the list and count the, the only two ones that I think could compete with it, which are Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen. Let's see, not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Okay, Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen got one each. Uh, Attack on Titan has two. Okay, three, and then two for Jujutsu Kaisen. Three and two. Three for Jujutsu Kaisen. Five for Attack on Titan because they got nominated twice for some reason. Uh, not here. Four for Jujutsu Kaisen. Five for Jujutsu Kaisen. So we're, we're tied five each. Uh, now we're tied six each for Best Director. Okay, seven, seven, eight. Okay, we've got seven for Attack on Titan, eight for Jujutsu Kaisen. Eight and eight. We're tied once again. Nine and nine. We're tied once again. Uh, ten for Jujutsu Kaisen. Best boy. None here. It's alright, nine and ten. Alright, so, ten nominations for Attack on Titan and eleven for Jujutsu Kaisen. Wonder Egg Priority got as many nominations as Jujutsu Kaisen. Let that sink in. And yet, Jujutsu Kaisen got the Anime of the Year nom. Not only, despite the fact that it was they're nominating the second core, never mind the fact that it already won last year, despite it only being halfway done, so they basically awarded the first core of Jujutsu Kaisen Anime of the Year, which is fucked. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, it's probably just because of the WEP ending. But if the ending was so bad... Why do you get all those other nominations? Why is Wet Egg Pussy getting all these nominations and not something that people loved across the board like Dragon Maid? I can tell you the answer to that is because, uh, Ilulu. Anything that draws even the slightest ire of controversy, controversy gets swept under the fucking rug. Or at the very least... Not nominated nearly as much as it should. Because if these two fuckers can get their sequels nominated, there's no reason Dragon Maid couldn't get that much either. In fact, 
How many users did Dragon Maid score on Mal? That's a good number. I think it was at the top of the summer list. Oh, no, it got beat up by fucking reincarnated slime, really? The second cur of the second season? Really? People have that bad taste? It was still one of the most talked about shows of the season. I saw more people talking about Dragon Maid than fucking reincarnated slime. The final season, part five. Yeah, I also hate that, by the way. At that point, just call it the next season. 9.6 score. To be fair for slime. Oh yeah, what score does it have right now? Too fucking high is probably the answer. The final season. Final season part two. I am surprised this is not at like a fucking 9.6 already. To be fair for Slime is kind of running out of stuff manga source wise. You know it's not running out of uh, source? Dragon Maid. They're up to their fucking 12th volume now. I'm pretty sure. And the manga only went up to... Oh, let me check, because I know I wrote it down in one of the Discord servers that I'm in. Volume. Okay, they are up to volume 7 in the manga, where season 2 ended. And volume 8 is coincidentally when season 2 got announced. So, I guess that's fitting. Season, if there is a season 3, it will probably catch up to the manga after season 3, but they're still... They could do it, especially with the the year it would... Excuse me. The year it would take to produce the show. They'll probably get, like, a couple more volumes out in that time. Don't we get the spin-offs? Uh, the spin-offs are cute. Uh... Kyoto Animation should honestly not waste their time with them, though. The original is where it's at. Like, if they want to do the spinoffs, give them to, like... Uh, I wouldn't mind if one of them went to Cloverworks. Like, um... Ooh, ooh, you know what, you know what you can do? You know what you can do? If I have my way? Uh, give Dogakobo the... Uh... The Kana spinoff. Give Cloverworks the Elma spinoff. And then, what's a good, uh... Oh, thanks for the follow on Twitter, by the way, Kiko. Um, and then... What studio should get the Lukawa spinoff? Uh, what's a, what's a good... I guess... Passion? They did a really good job with, uh... Lol, well, you've got the tabs. Oh, no, I just saw the notification pop up on my phone. Uh, I, Passion did a good job with Interspecies Reviewers. I guess give them the... If, if they're good with Monster Girls, give them uh, the Luca spinoff. None of them will be as good as the actual show, but I'll take... If they use the same voice actors, I will, I'll take it. More Dragon Maid is only a good thing in the world. All right. Uh, maybe Alice in Deadly School will shine some light on the, on the story here. Zombies. Oh, okay. So it's literally just school live. The pure show to gotta read it. Yeah, it is, by the way. Alice in Deadly School is zombies. Alright, what else got snubbed? What are the show- Dude! ReZero only got one fucking nomination! And it was for Echidna to be the villain again. Even though I'm pretty sure she's not even a villain anymore. Uh, Quintessential Quintuplets got fucking snubbed, Lamal. Dude, did I miss something? When did Quintessential Quintuplets take the fuck off? Why, did they, why does it have 500,000 users? How many does this prequel have? When did this take off? When did it get into the top 200 most popular anime? Did I did I miss something? 
And I didn't get a single nominee, by the way. Even though you could, they could have nominated any one of these five girls for best girl if they wanted to, or best romance. But then they realized, wait a second. All of these girls suck. Actual character development in the manga ending. Oh, what the fuck? Redo of Healer didn't get a single award? No justice. No justice. I can't believe Flair didn't get fucking best girl. I can't believe uh, fucking Kearu didn't get best protagonist. What the fuck? Uh, low-key, Beastars Season 2 got snubbed. Uh, it did, it got a small handful of nominations, but, like, not, like, it's wild that it had less, like, people watching it than shows, like, ReZero. May I don't know, maybe, maybe, I maybe I'm wrong about that one. Uh, I liked what I saw of Kimono Jihen. I'm surprised that didn't get anything. Uh, this one got way too many nominations. This one was not noteworthy at all. <laughs> Seven Deadly Sins is fucking dead, dude. I feel so bad for Seven Deadly Sins fans, because I've heard that the story's good. But it just, the anime, it got handed to Dean and it fucking burned to ash. Um, everything down here. Man, Log Horizon just didn't come back in the way that they wanted it to, huh? No, I saw no one talk about Cells at Work this whole last year. And I forgot that it had not only its second season, but the fucking, the, the edgy spinoff. Uh... What the fu- X-Arm didn't get a single nomination? I don't want that. They ask you how you are, you just have to say- X-Arm got fucking snubbed, boys. You can't get into it because they would never understand. They got fucking snubbed! <laughs> Too long in between. Yeah. Fucking Heaven's Design Team got a nomination. And not, like, any of these shows up here. Why did 2.43 not get an award for a nomination for Best Opening? This was on no, Deadass, my favorite song, anime-wise, that came out last year. Fucking kicked ass. What was it? It was... I think... I confused the names of the song and the artist. Mahayami. Song. Okay, the song is called, uh, Yama, and it's by a band called Mahi, and it fucking kicked ass. Oh yeah, I did see people talk about Iramakun. It did get snubbed, didn't get a single nomination, what the fuck? Uh, Eurocamp didn't get anything, I can kinda see why. That, that, that's become more of a niche thing. It was still cute though. I am incredibly surprised Heaven's Design Team got a nomination. Um... Yeah, all these show- Oh no! Kiko, Idols didn't get a fucking nominee! Idols is good. Yeah, I don't know why you expect a Geki doll to get anything either. Um, let's see. Higi Hero got snubbed, bro. This shit was more popular than eighty six, more popular than Vivi. I saw people talking about he Higi Hero. I didn't, which is crime. I mean, Higi Hero is not great, but you telling me it got fucking. Overlooked when it was that big was because it's about a dude who takes in a high school girl was that was that was was that a little too too iffy in today's climate They don't fuck 
I very surprised about this one actually. Most controversial award. It still would have. Did Nagatoro get any? Yes, it, it got a few. Nagatoro got a few. It wasn't any more controversial than fucking Dragon Maid or Redo of Healer. Okay, let's see. Nagatoro got how many? It got it got a, a handful. It got best romance. It got uh, best comedy. What else did it get? Uh, was that it? I could have sworn I got one more. Nagatoro, Nagatoro. Uh, I, I guess it only got two. Best protagonist. Yeah, it only got two. Uh, yeah, Nagatoro was controversial. Nagatoro did get nominated for best girl? Uh, no, but I wouldn't not put her in the list for best girl anyway. She's not even the hottest girl in that show. The fucking orange hair girl with the with the fish eyes are is with the with the evil grin. She's way hotter. Uh, Nagatoro was not that good either. So, although the I will concede that some of the girls are hot. I do like that they put her in a swimsuit when she had a tan line, and that, sh that showed off her tan lines. That's the only good thing about Nagatoro. 86 got how much? Too many is the answer, my friend. Too many. Uh, 86 got... One for best drama. Uh, two for best score. Six, 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 two. Best drama, six. Uh, three for best girl. And four for anime of the year. Yeah, um, this girl's not hot in the slightest. Vladelina Melize is not I feel nothing when I look at her like Nobara is hot Komi-san she's cute she's cuter and hotter in the manga I is not even the hottest character in that show it should have been fucking Rika I wouldn't put Sarasa on this list but she is the hottest character in her show I would not have put Toru on the list either I know best girl is not an exclusive ranking on hotness or cuteness, but I am incredibly surprised that Sarasa got the nomination. Kiko is ecstatic over that, even though she has a 0% chance of winning. I, I hate to break it to you, but there is no way between the judges and the voters that Kageki Shoujo is going to win any of them. It's better... I'll... It looks better than Geki Doll, Idly Pride, and I Dolls. I'll give you that. Um, I didn't see too many people talk about Combatants Will Be Dispatched, which is weird because it's from the Konosuba author. Oh, dude, Shaman King got fucking snubbed. Oh, but it's got the sign of the devil, so... No one talked about the Shaman King reboot. Irma Kun did get snubbed. It didn't get a single nomination. And that's weird because I, I actually saw people talking about it and it's like scoring decently well. I dead ass forgot. It's literally Konosuba pre Konosuba. Oh, did it come out before? He, uh, Shit, I should know the Konosuba no author's name. I, I, I am sorry. I, sh I should know this. Okay, I knew it was Akatsuki something. Natsume Akatsuki. It's just that Naruto has ruined me for the word Akatsuki because I just think of that immediately. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, Eden Zero didn't get a single nomination. Eden Zero fucking sucks. 
I deadass forgot there was a new season of Zombieland Saga, dude. Oh god, I'm getting plugged up because I've been talking nonstop for an hour and a half. I'm still kind of surprised Zombieland Saga didn't get anything. Uh, Megalobox got some nominees. Shadow House got way more nominations than I thought. It got more than zero. I thought the show was supposed to be good. I didn't watch it. But I heard it was supposed to be good. Super Cub got snubbed, dude! This is Garbaggio! I can't believe it. Uh, I think, Kiko, I think you were the only person I knew who talked about Mashiro no Oto. Uh, let's see. Buck 10. I'm surprised this didn't get any more attention, considering it's an ECO in property. Uh, this, I heard, sucked ass. My friend who loves kaiju shit, uh, really likes Godzilla Singular Point, but he was the only, he was like well, only one of two people I knew who watched this show. Uh, Dragon Goes House Hunting, I would have thought would have been way higher on the popularity charts, uh, based on how often I see the manga in stores, but I think it was this, uh, the victim of a shitty anime adaptation. Let's make a mug didn't get fucking nominated. Let me die. 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 Oops. I can't believe it. Uh yeah, everything down here doesn't matter at all. Just fucking trolled Shadow on a stream with Rick Roll. Thank you, Lord of Memes. I'm gonna be honest though. I don't know who Shadow is. I appreciate the follow and the first time viewing. Fairy Ron Maru seemed whack. I don't even know what that show is. If I looked at it, I glazed over it. The detective is already dead! Didn't get a single nomination! Yes! 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 Validation! I shit on this show all over the fucking Castaway Anime podcast. And it didn't get anything. Best title drop award. <laughs> All right, I, I feel okay. This is a. I feel instantly better about this. Ooh, you dropped a YouTube link. Yeah, nice try, buddy. I recognize that anywhere. <laughs> Stream with Rickroll. Uh, I, it's fucking Rickroll, dude. Realist hero snubbed. Realist hero was never getting nominated for anything. Get the fuck out of here. Most Soul Award. I re I've been on the internet too long to not recognize that fucking, uh, that link, Lord of Memes. Also, I don't know who Shadow is, so. Are you from one of the, the discords that I'm in? Or you are you just a, a passerby looking for people? Images at there's what was currently cosplaying at at the moment. Are you just a passer a passersby? There's what was currently cosplaying as at the moment. I feel like if I click on this link, it's going to be at least a GIF of uh Rick Astley Rick Roll. So I'm not gonna click on it. Okay, I'll click on it. Oh, it's just, uh, Maple from Nekopara. I have not played any of the Nekopara games because I don't really play visual novels. Uh, is Shadow a cosplayer? Also, how you doing? Thanks for popping in and giving the stream a follow. I appreciate it. k k, -k cringe Uh, what else got snubbed? Remake Our Life didn't get anything! And that one was better than this show. Girlfriend, girlfriend didn't get a fucking 
remake the awards. He did. He did get what he deserved. Girlfriend, girlfriend didn't get nominated, and I guess I understand that none of these girls are hot, and it was only it was like barely any funny. Ja oh, dude, speaking of controversial shows not getting any awards, Jahi got fucking snubbed, bro. Jahi didn't get a single fucking award. I am fucking not okay! Granted, it wasn't that great, but... It deserved uh, more awards than fucking Wonder Egg Priority. Based audio. Dude, I've, I got my Stream Deck soundboard right here. And, uh, where's the, yeah, where's the best guy ever won? Here it is. The power! There you go. Where's, let's see. We do a little trolling. These are all, I, I fucking love every single sound that I have on here. Waiting for summer 2022. Uh, what happens in summer 2022 is some hype shit. Oh, yeah, some hype shit. Fucking Devil is a Part-Timer comes back from the fucking dead after nine years. That's gonna be a good... I, I gotta rewatch the first season. I, I gotta prep myself. That's gonna be a good one. We we might end up talking about that show on the podcast. Uh, Rent a Girlfriend Season 2 comes out, which is bad. This comes out, which is good, because this is by the Takagi-san author. I'm pretty sure this is the Takagi-san author. It is. I, I recognize that art style. Ultimate Games Tough for Mobs. Is that a good one? Ooh, I know this one is by the Dagashi Kashi author. Shadow's House got a fucking season two? How? Uh. Oh, yeah, there is a new Kakigururi coming out. Ultimate Games Tough for Mobs. Did that show up in here yet? Uh, I don't think it's listed yet on Mal. You got a podcast? Oh, my my friend, if you will kindly turn your attention on your screen to the YouTube uh, part at the bottom of your screen that says YouTube Neon Manta. It's a pod it's an anime podcast called Castaway Anime. And we talk about anime on it, as you might guess. There's only three parentheses four episodes out right now. I count the summer seasonal podcast as one episode, even though it's split into two parts. Why'd you call it Castaway? Uh, it was aquatic themed, and it's a podcast. It's a podcast where we talk away about anime. Also, it rolls, Castaway anime rolls off the tongue. Also, the logo that I had commissioned for it is fucking sick. Uh, if I open this, what window is going to open out? All right, cool. Let me, let me get the picture out for it. Look at that shit. That shit fucking clean! The fucking fishing rods on this desert island are microphones. That's fucking sick! But yes, it does roll off the tongue well. Why'd you... Sick. There are uh, three episodes out right now. There's one where we did one on the summer... Uh, it's myself and one of my uh, buddies named Crunchy Bagels. He's a small anti-tuber. We did one episode on the summer 2021 seasonals where we talked about every single show. Uh, we did one on how spring looking. We'll take a look at that in just a sec. Uh, there, we did one on High Guardian Spice, which is my favorite episode that we've done so far. Decent views. I'm very surprised for it. Literally, that channel started back in summer in like August, and we've already pulled in 1,200 views out off of four videos. Which is incredibly good for a channel that started out from nothing back in August of last year. I wish we had a few more subscribers. 2022. I mean, not 20. Uh, we only we have 22 subscribers right now. But hey, Wiz, if you subscribe right now, you can make it 23. And then... I am looking forward to this show. That, that's good. And then the last, most recent episode, it is 23. Based. Thank, if you sub just now, thank you. Uh, the most recent episode we did is of the first batch of JoJo Stone Ocean episodes. And all of them, all of three episodes that are out right now are really good and I like them a lot. 
We would have done one on fall uh, 2021 anime, but the guests that we had on couldn't make it at the last second, and it kind of messed up our schedule. So we had to cancel that one. We are going to do the winter one. Uh, that episode will actually be out this Monday, the first half, and then the second half will come out the following week, I think. I hope. And then... We're going to be doing one on Bleach soon, like, from the start of Bleach, because neither of us had seen Bleach before, and we're going to watch all of Bleach to prep ourselves for when the anime comes back. In fall, I think. Bleach? Damn. Yeah, it, 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 time will tell if it ends up being a struggle. Spring's got <coughs> Shield Hero, which we're also in talks about doing a podcast for. I uh, He hasn't seen season one yet. I have. So, that's going to be something if we end up deciding to do it for season two. Uh, there's going to be a new season of Love is War, which is incredibly fucking based. That's, uh... Oh, 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 oh. That one's a little too loud. I need, to, I need to turn the volume down on that one. <laughs> fucking Data Lives coming back. This one is going to be the My Dress Up Darling of next season. Because this girl is also incredibly fucking hot. I find it incredibly... Oh yeah, Spy X Family. That one's going to be good too. Spring's looking to be a cool season. I, ha I would have no doubt that Spy X Family is going to be the best non-sequel show. I, can't, I couldn't tell you yet if it's going to be better than Love is War. Because Love is War Season 2 is a 10 out of 10. But it's probably going to be the best solo show. There's a new Love Live, which is made exclusively for you. I find it incredibly fitting that Love is War has a new season at the same time as Diet Love is War. This anime was made for me. A new season of fucking Bookworm, which is hilarious. A new season of uh, Machikado Mizuku, for the people like that. We're getting a new fucking Black Rock shooter. Uh, Kingdom, if you're into that. I've heard the anime is not that good. Oh, we're getting Squid Game, bro! We're getting the Squid Game anime! How many old shows they throwing back? Uh, quite a number. Oh yeah, we're also getting another fucking, uh, Takagi-san author show. Even though this one's not going to be as popular. You can tell us by the Takagi-san author because... God damn, that's not a four head. That's a motherfucking five head. How many old shows they throwing back? I don't I refuse to count this as an old show. Um I think that's just a sequel to the current Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Titus Laugh. Oh yeah, the only reason the Komi-san se second season anime is this low on the list is because they haven't gotten enough users yet to to put it up higher, um, I guarantee you it's going to be, like, right up here. I would not be surprised if it surpassed Data Live. So yeah, we're getting Komi, we're getting Love's War, we're getting, uh, Shikimori, we're getting Spy X Family. Maybe this show, this show looks kind of cute. Indecipherable. This is a cute deadpan girl. Uh, I don't have much faith in the studio, because I'm pretty sure this is the Uzaki-chan guys. Oh, no, they weren't. Oh, they're the Nekopara guys. Speaking of Nekopara, haha. Uh, I still don't have too much faith in the studio, because the only other shows they did are This Thing That No One's Ever Heard Of, and uh, Ursakai Picnic, which uh, I've heard wasn't that good. All these other shows are up in the air. Uh, but it looks like an interesting season. Uh, this season, we'll talk about more uh, when the podcast comes out. I do like what I've seen of My Dress Up Darling thus far. This girl, Mar fucking Marin Kitagawa, absurdly hot. Summertime render when you spend the summer making a video. <laughs> yeah, this bitch, it, insane how fucking hot she is. All right, let's see. Let's go back to let's go back to the snubs. Um, does this count as a snub? Uh, My life is a villainess season two because I remember the first season got a few nominations last year. 
Oh, dude, why the fuck was Eden 10 not nominated for best opening? What the fuck? Go up. Oh, we already talked about these ones. Uh, yeah, these ones didn't get snuff. Well, Dra if you ask me, Dragon Maid didn't get enough awards. It should have gotten all the fucking awards. It should have been the best everything. Yeah, my email's blown up. Bokutachi was snubbed. Yeah, we did mention that Remake Our Life got fucking nothing, which is weird considering it. I did see people talking about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh. Oh, man, I need water. Um... This got, like, one nomination, and to be fair, it was the one it deserved it for, because I do think the romance was uh, cute between these two. That slapped because it was so inf informational. Uh, if only the show wasn't CG, but this is definitely a read the manga show. At least this girl is incredibly hot. This sh was it Is it fair to say that Dungeon of Black Company got snubbed? Ramon's audience seethe. Oh, yeah, because they fucking aired the episodes out of order. What the fuck were they thinking with that, by the way? Why, why did they do that? What, w what was the benefit of airing the episodes out of order? Was it, like, some experimental indie shit they were trying to do? Yeah, Pe Peach Boy Riverside, its episodes, aired out of chronological order. It is not, like, a straight, proper chronological series of events in uh, from the manga. Which is fucked up. I don't know why they did that. It just made people mad and confused. And that hurts me twice as much, because this is written by Cool Kyo motherfucking Shinjo. No, wait. Hang on, I think I got that one wrong. I think, was this the one where he made the character designs, or where he, uh, he wrote for it? Okay, yeah, he wrote for this one, and he did the art for this one. He did the art for E to 10. E to 10, 10 also got snubbed, by the way. This should have gotten one. It works well for the first half, second half. It didn't really matter. Um, A lot of these fucking shows that I thought would have gotten at least one nomination got kind of snubbed. Like, fucking Aquatope didn't get anything. E to 10 should have gotten one. E to 10 should have gotten, like, best opening. It had the MAPPA backing. I can I can tell you why it didn't get it because um uh the first episode it ends with a uh, this nun girl where is she yeah Gil uh this girl gets raped at the end of the first episode by like some na Nazi soldier bastards and I think that turned people off from the show but even still. The score is decent. It's got a decent number of people. It had more people watching it than fucking... What show down here got nominated? That It got more people watching than fucking Kakagi Shoujo! So what the fuck? Why did Kakagi Shoujo get so many fucking noms? It had great care. I would have put this in fucking best character design. I love these fucking character designs. Fucking, which one's the best one? It might be Miku. Uh, I don't know. I like them all so much. Hayato's pretty good. Easley looks like he was ripped straight out of fucking Hunter x Hunter and then put through a cool Kyoshinja filter. Uh, I think aside from Kageki Shoujo, all these other shows got snubbed. Or at least we're too obscure to give a shit about. And it looks like that's correct. Alright, last season. Bro! Tactical Up Destiny got snubbed! It wasn't good either, but I thought it would have gotten one. That's crazy. Miruku chan, Platinum End. And you can't tell me. That's because it was the last season that came out the last year. Because here's fucking Demon Slayer. Here's fucking Komi-san. Um, here's more fucking 86. Here's Ranking of Kings, which got like a decent number of uh, animations. 
I mean, nominations, rather. Uh, how many noms did Mushika Tensei get? Let's see. It got Best Fantasy. It got... It got a decent number. Best Fantasy... Tensei, Mishka Tensei, where is it? It showed up quite a number of times. Was I mistaken? Okay, there it is. Uh, best animation, which is one that it uh, deserves to be nominated for. Did it only get two? I could have sworn it showed up more than twice. Did it really only show up twice? I could have sworn it got more than two. Dude! My senpai is annoying! Got fucking snubbed! It didn't get a damn thing! Why the fuck is Futaba not in Best Girl? Why is it not in Best Comedy? Imagine Rudeus. Well, you know what? If Rudeus was in Best Boy, he would give uh, Miyamura some competition, because then there'd be two characters who fucked in that uh, category. Why the fuck is uh, Igor uh, Takeda not in fucking... in Best Boy? This guy's a fucking Chad. Everyone, this should have been in Best Character Design. This didn't get a damn thing. That's fucked up. I'm mad about this one. I'm mad about this one. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. I am not okay. I am fucking not okay! That one's f fucked. I forget what this sound effect was. What is whipped? Oh, it's, it's the Matt Pat one. Fina Pirate Princess got more nominations than fucking My Senpai is Annoying. That is f f fucked up. Man, all of these shows. Hey, K Story didn't get anything! This one was fucking Science Saru. Okay, I'm, I don't think this one was a. Uh, I don't know why. Sorry, not the show. I don't think uh, Yuasa directed this one, did he? Okay, no. It was... This is still Naoko Yamada! Motherfucking... Motherfucking Naoko Yamada! The silent voice director! Not many watched it. Yeah, that's a crime! This was the one of the most slept-on shows of the fucking year, dude. I'm... I'm mad about that one. And they're sexualizing young girls, and it's getting to the point where even I have a problem with it. That is not okay. L uh, lol, the ASMR show didn't get anything. Um... Oh yeah, no, what, what, Kiko? Next you're gonna tell me that fucking Pride of Orange? Next you're gonna tell me that fucking Pride of Orange is there or something? Couldn't pinpoint the name. Oh, are you talking about the, the sexualizing young girls thing? Um, I forget the name of it, too. It was, it's like a TED Talk parody. TED Talk parody. Oh, it's Sam Hyde. It's the 2070 Paradigm Shift. Sounds like Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal. Uh, Pride of Orange? Get this. It's a hockey anime that you, it, it tricks you into thinking that's a hockey anime, and then it fucking pulls the wool over your eyes and rips the rug out from under you, and it's an idol show the whole time. And I was mad about that. Sounds based. Sounds cringe, more like. It was bad. It also spoils itself in the very first episode. It starts at the end of the show where they're fucking playing in the Nationals. No, not the international. The internationals. They beat, I think, the fucking USA team in hockey. And then 
after they win the like fucking championship cup, they do a fucking idol performance. And then it flashes back to the beginning of their story and all the friends are like chilling out. Literally six minutes in, they're all together in a hot tub, all, all naked, in like in the hot springs. That that's the kind of show this is. Show the end first. I mean, why not show the end first? I mean, it's not like I want to watch them work their way up to that point. It's not like I want to see how it could have ended. Bro, shout out to all the people still watching Yuki Yuna is a hero. Y'all are... Y'all are dedicated. This fucking came out. The, the Blade Runner anime came out. Who the fuck is Sola Digital Arts? Oh, they're the ones who made fucking Ghost in the Shell Netflix and Ultraman. Okay, but Production IG helped them with both. Did people watch Ultraman? They did not. Lupin got one nom. Lupin got one nom that was for voice acting. Uh, I've heard some people talk about Digimon Ghost Game. I'm a little surprised it didn't get one. If if Lupin could get a nom, then Digimon should get a nom too for something. Because fucking, I think Digimon Reboot from last year got a nomination. If fucking Dragon Quest Adventure of Die anime reboot could get a nomination, then surely Digimon could get something. Uh, all these other ones don't matter at all. I cannot believe Tacked Op Destiny didn't get one. That's crazy. Are there any movies that got snubbed? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen didn't come out in the West yet. Uh, this didn't come out in the West yet. I'm pretty sure Best Film was only for things that came out in the West. Okay, yeah, all of these came out in the West. Um, I am incredibly surprised Bell made the list. Because that shit came out in theaters not even a full week ago. No, wait. Tom by tomorrow it will be a full week ago. Do you know about Power Ranger lore? That is a very dangerous sentence, Uman Groys one, that you're bringing into apropos of nothing. Although I thank you for the uh, dropping in for the view. How you doing? I, Bell does, does, does deserve the win over all these fucking movies. Uh, I did only see these two because LOL, Ava Rebuild. This is on Netflix and I do kind of want to watch it. I haven't seen Shirobaku yet and LOL, Demon Slayer. Um, this one's going to come out in the West next week. Going to watch Bell in two weeks and a bit. It's good, man. It's fucking good. Um, I will... I gotta out myself as a fucking... as a fraud. Oh, drop follow. Ooh, man, Gross One, thank you for the follow. I, I'm worried that I'm gonna miss Sing a Bit of Harmony because, uh, I don't think it's coming out on a day where I have off of work. Because Funimation is not very fun. Unless it's, unless your name is My Hero Academia or Dragon Ball or, uh, I think they did Demon Slayer as well. If you're, if you're not a shonen movie, if you don't have a fucking name attached to you, you're not gonna get a flexible movie premiere schedule. Like, I could go when... Dude, Dragon Ball Superhero is going to have such a marketing boost. There's more Eureka 7? I fucking forgot there was Eureka 7 movies. And apparently... So do the people... Does it even have a score? It doesn't even have a score yet, so few people watched it. Um... Same with this one. This has fucking double the users. The Spain arc. Isn't this the fucking... This is the sexual harassment yaoi show. It has arcs? Yeah, your fan base is dead. Whew. Yeah, uh, I guarantee you once the Jujutsu Kaisen movie gets brought over to the West, it's going to... Here, let me let me paint you a picture. Next year, best film category. Uh, superhero is gonna get nominated. Jujutsu Kaisen is gonna get nominated. And depending on how fast G Kids can get that um, 
can get that fucking new Shinkai movie out in the West. That's going to get on the list. Maybe The Deer King, because that's supposed to come out this year. Maybe, maybe. Inu O, the new uh, Yuasa musical that's set in like the similar setting as a Heike story, because it's another Heike uh, setting. Um. It was a fucking compilation film of the fucking Netflix Ghost in the Shell. That's hilarious. Uh, yet, after you hit this, this point, none of these movies matter. Uh, let's see. What movies came out? Okay, here's words bubble up like soda pop. A lot more people watch... More people watch that than the fucking My Hero movie? I'm not surprised the bell number is so low right now because it just hit the West. I wouldn't be surprised though if it's gonna skyrocket. Oh yeah, see? It hasn't even updated yet. It's already gone up 5,000 viewers. And I think, because I think these list numbers update every 48 hours, I want to say. Because like, this one's at 126 on the graph. And it's like, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's at the same place it was. That was fucking good. You're gonna, you're gonna have a good time. I watched it in IMAX. Uh, watch it in IMAX if you can, Kiko. That shit elevated the movie. It was, mwah. It was a... I, I need to watch words bubble up like soda pop. It won't be IMAX. Ooh, that's, that's gonna be a... You gotta watch it in IMAX, bro. You just gotta. You watching it dubbed or sub? I won't. This one I won't judge you for because I've listened to the dubbed tracks of uh, of the songs from Bell, and the girl that they got to sing is fucking immaculate. Sounds really good. And like, how often do we get dubbed, uh, subbed? All right, that's the guy watched it sub too because they didn't offer the dub in uh IMAX. How often do we get good dubbed Japanese music? Japanese songs. We barely even get dubbed Japanese songs. And like, and the ones that the times we do are like in Shinkai movies where it's the same artist. Like, Rad Wimps will just dub them, will just sing an English and a Japanese version. Uh, also, Lamau, the, the My Hero movie didn't get nominated for Best Film, owned. My Hero fell off. Uh, I can't say I'm surprised none of these movies got nominated. This one looks original. David Production made a movie? No English translation. Uh, well, clearly it didn't come out in the West, so not many people watched it. Uh, yeah, none of these movies matter. Spring... Uh, the fake grand order. Did that come out in the West? I don't think that came out in the West. A Gundam movie. There was a fucking Knights of Sidonia movie? I think that came out in the West. Funimation Films? Pompo got a limited release? It's great. Uh, Pompo is getting a limited release. I don't think it came out here yet, because I know G Kids is doing it. Uh, films. Coming soon. Dear King 2, but maybe not in the US. It, it will. G kids. Uh, Kiko, do you live in Europe? Because I feel like if Bell came... Okay, that I assumed as much. Because I, I, I thought that if Bell came out in uh, Europe by now, you would have already gone to see it. And the fact that you said three weeks a while ago was like, damn, you would have seen that way sooner. I wouldn't be surprised if all three of these movies were on the list for best film next year. This is by Studio Ponak, right? Is I I'm pretty sure this is Ponak. The or is it Production IG? It's one of those two. Oh, the Deer King. Okay, it's Production IG. 
Did it? Yeah, it already came out in the... So, man, you, you guys already got Pompo the Cinephile? Fucking lucky bastards. Uh, okay, so yeah, Funimation did bring over the fucking Knights of Sidonia movie. I can't imagine too many people saw it. Oh, oh, speaking of movies brought over, let me show you something. Uh, I went to see an anime film before a week before watching Bell. I don't know if you heard of this one. Fucking Poopel of Chimney Town. Deadass. I was the only one in the theater. I had never seen that happen before. It got an English dub and everything. I I thought that was a myth. I thought people are always kidding when they say, I went to see a movie and no one... Not in that bad adverts? Exactly. Um, Eleven Arts who are notorious for not being good at promoting their movies. Like, G-Kids goes fucking ham with their, promo with their uh, promoting, and that's why G-Kids is one of my favorite... Uh, in fact, not even one of. They are my favorite uh, anime-related uh, business in the West right now because they're doing good fucking shit. It's not just films that they're uh, bringing over, like doing stuff like Future Boy Conan... Uh, making that available on Blu-ray, and not even just anime, just foreign films in general. They did, I'm, I might be mistaken, but I think G-Kids, uh, helped bring Wolf Walkers to Apple TV+, Plus. and I know G-Kids did the, the Cartoon Saloon trilogy, uh, box set, that has Wolf Walkers, um, Song of the Seas, I think that movie is called... Uh, what's the other Cartoon Saloon movie? I should know this. I haven't seen any of them yet, but I should know this because they're good. I think I already said Secret of Kells. God damn it, I should fucking know this. Cartoon Saloon. Okay, no, maybe it was these three, I think. Box Set Trilogy. What movies came in that one? Okay, it was the it was Irish f folklore. They're a cool studio. I like Cartoon Saloon. I haven't seen any of the movies yet, but I like that. I like that they're still doing two D animation. L. Yeah, Eleven Arts is an L. So few people. Sending some VTuber models was rigging at the moment. Hyperdimension Neptunia. Are they? Is this like official? Cause like I thought you couldn't do a VTuber of existing characters. I thought you can only make OCs. Unless it's like for an SFM like video project. Cause like pretty sure these are copyright. All the all the non-associated with a company VTubers I've seen all have, like, original designs. I have plans for you to use from Niku in the future. Did Bell get nominated for an Oscar? It fucking better. Could you use them in VR chat? I mean, you probably could. Yeah, all these are probably going to be good. I think I'm most looking forward to Pompo the Cinephile, if only because of how wacky it looks. But Masaki, Masaki was a musical with the animation that he does. That's going to be a hit, too. This one's probably going to be baseline good. But yeah, the Funimation's only bringing over Sing a Bit of Harmony for a few days, and it doesn't look like it's going to be in my area. Did also buy a new streaming mic and test it with a loud fart, so yeah, it picked it up. Base test. Epic. Um, was that the last movie that was out? Yeah, there's Deer King. 
They just pump up the cinephile, but they didn't come out in the West. I don't think we got the Review Starlight movie. I think we're going to get this movie later down the line. I think I've seen the poster of Fortune Favors Lady Nikuko. Well, that was the anime. That was the anime awards. These were wrong as usual. That was a fun two hours. Got two new follows. Uh, so thanks that didn't catch any screens of every star life there were any to begin with a shame because it'd be great to watch it in a theater and uh, I, I try to make it a point to watch as many anime movies as possible if only to let the people the powers that be know that yes i want i dream of a fucking universe where we get english dubs and subs like i want fucking simultaneous releases of uh anime movies in Japanese theaters and Western theaters, in the same way that we get them with, uh, with like AAA Japanese games. And it's a shame that we don't. Not for dubs and subs, though, exactly. There's a lot more anime in theaters. Well, that too. I mean, for like, for, as a means to that end, we got shit like, uh, uh, G uh, no, it's not G-Kids, it's a Fathom Events that does the, uh, the Studio Ghibli Marathon. Ghibli Fest, that's what it's called, Ghibli Fest, uh, pretty much every year. Where they just, uh, take a, a Ghibli movie once a month and put it in theaters. Which is cool, because it gives people who never saw a Ghibli movie in the, on the big screen before a chance to do just that. Um, the best time that I've ever had watching an anime movie in theaters was... If I were to rank the three in no particular order, it was Weathering With You, Dragon Ball Super Broly, and Your Name. I saw all three of those in theaters, and all three of them were amazing. I need to check the turnaround time on the Broly movie, because I'm pretty sure that shit was only like a month between Japanese release and American release. Release date. Yeah, that shit was literally only a month. It came out in December 14th in, uh, in, in Japan. Then it came out January, uh, January 2019. I want shit like that. Box Office International. I had such a fucking awesome time watching Broly in theaters. And I cannot wait for Superhero. I hope that if if not a month, then sooner. I would love to get a fucking simultaneous release. Because I'm very... Superhero is unironically one of the most anticipated films of the year for me. Even though it's CG... And while it looks good, CG, I really wanted more of Broly's art style because that's the best Dragon Ball has ever looked, period. Um, what other anime movies are supposed to come out this year? Anime films in 2022. Oh, not the most anticipated anime movies. Anime, I should check anime released in America. Released in America theaters. Forgive the horrible typos. Theatrical release anime. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, they didn't add Bell to this list yet. What the fuck? This list needs more dedicated, uh, moderators. Dragon Ball Super Broly was so fucking good! I wanted that, but more! Why does Superhero look the way it does? I mean, it doesn't look bad, but still. 
at the very very least the fact that it's a gohan movie is a massive dub because gohan may finally get to do something for the first time since the boo saga Also, if Pan doesn't turn into a Super Saiyan, like, what was the fucking point? <laughs> Alright, I think that's a stream. So, thanks for coming out. Just like Gohan, get with Videl as a mate. Uh, Wiz, I don't know if you've kept up with your Dragon Ball lore, but Gohan not only gets with Videl, but they have a kid. They're, they're married, they fuck. They had the, the movie is going to be about Gohan and Piccolo with the kid. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks for coming out for the stream. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Follow the Twitter. I know Kiko, you already did. And Wiz, you already did. Uh, the first episode of the winter podcast will come out this coming Monday. So in six days. So look forward to that. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.